Hello and welcome back. In this short video, I will show how to implement the, uh, or just implement a ring buffer into your project because for some reason, uh, ST has not a ring buffer available in the hardware abstraction layer by default. Um, so I found a project by controllerstech.com and uh, modified it to, to work with this, um, uh, with my microcontroller, which is an STM32 F746. Um, so I will just uh, really quick show you here. I have the, the project uh, files and I have a, a C and a H file here. I will post a link below um, to a GitHub where you can find this. So the header file goes into the include folder of my project and the C file goes into the source folder here. So um, we can just press F5 to update and we can see that the ring buffer.c and ring buffer dot, uh, h, uh, should be here somewhere. No refresh. Yeah, there was, um, we need to in, in include this. So I open main dot h here and include the UR ring buffer dot h like this. So, um, also we need to open up the the ins uh, interrupt um, handler header file here and include it here. So include your ring buffer.h. I'm just pressing control space to get this uh, help menu. Um, in my, in the C file for the interrupt handlers here, um, we need to find the the serial ports interrupt handler routine and I'm going to use uh, USART 6 for this. Um, this working project here is based on the first video where I showed uh, how to integrate touch GFX uh, with the cube IDE and in that process I also did a cube MX project and that project um, I specifically instructed the, the viewer to uh, include uh, the global interrupt for USART 6 as well so that is what we are editing now. So this is the current UART handler or interrupt handler here. We just disable this by commenting it out. And then in the ring buffer, we should have a UART uh, ISR here. And it needs a handle and we only have one handle available. So we just use this like this. Uh, so now we have, now we use our own custom handler um, instead of the, the default one. Uh, in the main CVP, we need to, uh, up here after we have initialized all our peripherals and especially after we have uh, initialized our uh, our user here we will uh, write oh sorry this is uh, this is just a function definition not here uh, we'll go back here and see here after we have initialized actually called the method or the function that initializes the user six we can uh, call uh, it's called ring buff underscore init, and then again send the handle to you at six to that. So now we have um, a function. Uh, now we have uh, initialized the ring buffer, and we can use all the the functions available in the in the ring buffer. So I will just open the h file instead. So we have the first thing here, we have a UART buffer size. So if you need a larger buffer, you can just increase this to whatever number you, you want or need. Um, we have UART read, uh, reads a single byte. UART write, writes a single byte. Uh, a send array, uh, just point it to uh, a char array and say how many bytes you want to send. Send string uh, is probably kind of like the same thing. You can send a string. Um, we have this is data available, which will return how many bytes are available in the buffer. And we also have a flush for clearing out uh, leftovers if you have. There are some few other uh, functions that uh, the controls tech.com built uh, into this, but uh, I'm not using those at the moment. So if I go back to the CPP file here, I'll just save this for now. When we have initialized here, we can write uh, uart underscore send, uh, send string and write starting up like this. 
So now we write starting up and then we can go down. This project is based on uh, the previous uh, setup here. So I have a, a task here and in that uh, infinite loop down here, we can just comment all these out here like this and then write if is data available. Uh, so if we have data available on the serial port, we want to send that back. So I can write uh, serial, uh, no, it wasn't UART. UART uh, write, and we'll just write UART underscore read. So the UART read will return one byte or one sharp data, and we will write that back instantaneously. So we'll have just have created a simple loop loopback uh, device here. So if I uh, press debug here, save the main, yes, we'll compile this and Hopefully we have included everything all the way around. Let's see. Oh, uh, let me just see. I just, if, else, if like this, yes, stupid mistake. Let's just try that one more time. It's getting late after all. Yes. So now we have uh, this open here. Uh, let me just real quick open a terminal. Um, so I've connected a serial uh, adapter to um, to the port uh, to the to my uh, the port on the board. Uh, let me just see if I can get that I have here. Um, so I have previously tested this. Um, so when we when I press go here, it should, it should say starting up. And if I write here, I'm getting a loop back. Uh, we can also attach a breakpoint down here. Uh, let me just find that here. Um, here on the UART write. So next time I type uh, a letter, it could be K. Hit the breakpoint, and if we go into the registers, we can find that K in the ring buffer. Um, let's see here, we go to the ring buffer dot C, ring buffer, Rx buffer here. We can see that we have, mm, we have the buffer here and it's pretty large. You see the last number or letter I received is a K. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, I will sh post a link to, to the files so you can implement these in your own project and I hope that this won't be necessary for much longer but let's see. Uh, for now we should be able to integrate this into a project to get a working uh, ring buffer in the system. Thanks for watching.